Hi there, my name is Mr. Pete. I am a fourth grade teacher. I am currently reading Katie Camillo's The Tale of Despero, and we are about to start book four. And we left off with Roscuro hatching a plan with Megary Sal about how Megary can become the princess with something mysterious under a napkin recalled to the light book the fourth. Chapter 34, kill them, even if they's already dead. Reader, you did not forget about our small mouse, did you? Back to the light. That was what Gregory whispered to him when he wrapped Despero in his napkin and placed him on the tray. And then Meg, after her conversation with Roscuro, carried the tray into the kitchen. And when she saw Cook, she shouted, It's me, Megary Sal, back from the deep downs. Ah, lovely, said Cook, and ain't we all relieved. Mig put the tray on the counter. So again, really quickly, Despero was under the, tr under the napkin on the tray. Now Mig has listened to the plan for Mascuro and is coming up into the kitchen. And Gregory said, I'm sending you back to the light for telling me a story. So Gregory saved him. And now Despero is in the kitchen here we go. Here, here, said Cook. Your duties ain't done. You must clear it. How's that? shouted Meg. You must clear the tray, shouted Cook. She reached over and took hold of the napkin and gave it a good shake. And Despero tumbled out of the napkin and landed right directly, plop, on a monopia, in a measuring cup full of oil. <laughs> Ack, said Cook. A mouse in my kitchen, in my cooking oil, in my measuring cup. You, Meg, kill him directly. Meg bent her head and looked at the mouse slowly sinking to the bottom of the glass cup. Poor little Meesey, she said, and she stuck her hand into the oil and pulled him out by his tail. Despero's back. And now Megary Sow is staring right at him. Notice he still has his tail. Despero, gasping and coughing and blinking at the bright light, could have wept with joy at his rescue, but he was not given time to cry. Kill him, shouted Cook. Go, said Mig. All right. Holding Despero by the tail, she went to get the kitchen knife. <laughs> but the mouse tail, covered as it was in oil, was slick and difficult to hold on to, and Mig, in reaching for the knife, loosened her grip, and Despero fell to the floor. Mig looked down at the little bundle of brown fur. Go, she said. That killed him for sure. Kill him, even if he's already dead, shouted Cook. That's my philosophy with mice. If they're alive, kill them. If they're dead, kill them. That way you can be certain of having yourself a dead mouse, which is the only kind of mouse to have. That's some good sophistry, that is. Kill him, even if they's already dead. Hurry, you cauliflower-eared fool, shouted Cook. Hurry. Despero lifted his head from the floor. The afternoon sun was shining through the large kitchen window. He had time to think how miraculous the light was, and then it disappeared and Meg's face loomed into view. She studied him, breathing through her mouth. Little Macy, she said, ain't you going to skedaddle? <laughs> she wants to let him go. Despero looked for a long moment into Meg's small, concerned eyes, and then there came a blinding flash and the sound of metal moving through the air as Meg brought the kitchen knife down, down, down. Repetition. Despero felt a very intense pain in his hindquarters. He leapt up and into action. Reader, he scurried. He scurried like a professional mouse. He zigged to the left. He zagged to the right. Remember, he was trying not to do that when he was living upstairs before the dungeon. Goal, shouted Mig. Missed him. Ain't that a surprise, said Cook, just as Despero scurried under a crack in the pantry door. I got the little Meesey's tail, though, said Mig. She bent over and picked up Despero's tail and held it up proudly, displaying it to Cook. So, shouted Cook, what good will that do us when the rest of him has disappeared into the pantry? 
I don't know, said Meg, and she braced herself as Cook advanced upon her, intending to give her a good clout to the ear. I don't know. We'll stop there. Now we know where Despero's tail went on the cover of the book. So was she gonna kill him anyways or did she accidentally miss him because she's nice? It's an interesting, we're not really sure there and we don't really know Roscuro's plan either. So we know she's up to something but we don't know what she's up to. We also know that Roscuro doesn't know anything about Despero and we know that Migri knows that Despero's a mouse but doesn't know anything either. Remember, he was on the tray the whole time Roscuro was talking about the plan. Chapter 35, The Knight in Shining Armor. Hmm, what does that mean? You know, we'll find out after you like, after you subscribe, after you leave a comment, and after you say hello, and I will say hello back. Let's have an awesome conversation about this book. Thank you so much for joining me and leaving comments, and I will see you when we find out who that knight in shining armor is on the next page. Peace.